kicked out, killed, kill or enslaved them. them. Took all their food supplies as well, and they had no. 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 <laughs> no. It's very frustrating. Now, so we decided to start exploring out to the west now. We came across the village of Mabila, near today's Selma, Alabama. Now, as we approached the palisade at Mabila, they had a large wooden fort wall too. We realized we were running low on some supplies, so we left many of our men out in the woods to scavenge for whatever supplies they could find. And the rest of us, including Hernando de Soto himself, approached the palisade. Now their chief came out and greeted us very warmly. In fact, they invited us to come inside. So we tied our horses up outside the palisade and went inside. But then we realized, after a while, there was something very strange about the village of Mabila. We started to notice that there were no women or children anywhere inside the palisade. Isn't that strange? Yeah. They killed all of them. It turns out the people at Mabila were planning a surprise attack. They had gotten all the women and children out of the village so they would be safe. And inside the different buildings, there were 3,000 warriors ready to attack us. Eventually, they sprang their trap, and they came out and they started firing on us with their bows and arrows. Well, we tried to escape the palisade, but they closed it and blocked it off. You see, we needed to get to our horses on the other side. Our horses were some of our most valuable weapons. The natives would cheer and celebrate whenever they would kill one of our horses because of how strong and mighty they were. Well, fortunately, we had left men outside the palisade to scavenge for supplies, remember? Yeah. Well, when they caught wind of what was happening, they came and they broke us out. And then we mounted our horses and began a counterattack. And Hernando de Soto commanded us to start lighting all the buildings on fire. That way, if there were any native warriors hiding inside, they would be smoked out. Well, the natives took a cue from that, and they started lighting our things on fire. And oh. they, would, they ended up burning every last piece of our medical supplies. They would also take other supplies. They would stand up on top of the palisade and say, What was yours is now ours! Say it with me. What, what was, was yours is now ours! And they set free our slave quarters, gave them weapons, and they started to attack us too. We fought that battle for nine long hours. But in the end, we won. In fact, we only lost about 20 of our own men, and we slaughtered 3,000 natives then. You see, we just had far better weapons and armor. Let's talk a little bit more about that. You see, the natives had bows and arrows, but they were very skilled marksmen, meaning they almost never missed their targets. A bow and arrow is almost completely quiet, so sometimes we would get hit with three or four arrows before we even knew where the bowman was, and they could fire them extremely rapidly. Now, we had our own European crossbows, but these weren't quite as effective as the natives' bows and arrows. You see, they took a long time to reload. They would make a loud ka noise every time we would reload or fire them. So if we missed, which happened pretty often, we would often get three or four arrows back before we could finish reloading. And we weren't quite as accurate with them. Now, we did have some guns. These were called aquabuses, and they were pretty primitive guns. Yes. They were even less accurate than our crossbows, took an even longer time to reload, and they were extremely loud, but we actually used their loudness to our advantage. You see, the natives weren't used to anything that could make a, no a loud noise like that, so it would frighten them. So we often would actually fire our guns, instead of using them as weapons, we would use them as fear tactics to herd the natives in one direction or another. Now, as I said before, our horses were our most valuable weapons. You see, the weapons we were really skilled at using were swords and lances. But can I hit somebody with a sword if they're 50 feet away from me? No. No. And remember, Juan Car remember, uh, remember we were wearing 80 pounds of armor? Can you run very fast if you have 80 pounds of armor on? No. no. Most of you don't even weigh 80 pounds. <laughs> 80 pounds of armor and then trying to run and swing a sword. Uh, that would be very difficult. But a horse carrying a fully equipped soldier could run at over 30 miles an hour. That's faster than any person could run. You see, the natives had almost no armor, so they were very fast and agile. They could climb a tree in a flash. We couldn't do that. But a native, no matter how fast they were, wasn't going to be able to outrun a horse. So we would spot a bowman, and we would ride as fast as we could toward them. And then we would use our swords and lances. And that's how come we were able to defeat them. We just had better weapons and armor.
In fact, I need a volunteer to wear some of the armor for me. Uh, who is sitting quietly on the uh, in the back, in the pink. Now, we had many layers to our armor. The first was a quilted vest like this. <laughs> this was actually the most effective piece of armor at keeping the arrowheads out. You see, the arrowheads get caught in the thick knotted cloth. We also had lots of armor mail. Now, this is made up of thousands of little rings of metal, so it's very strong, but it's also very flexible. It's also very heavy. This chainmail? No. This chainmail <laughs> is just a neck piece of chainmail, and it already weighs five pounds. We wouldn't just wear chainmail our chainmail around our necks. We would have it cover our entire torsos, our arms, and our legs. It's one of the main reasons our armor could weigh 80 pounds. And then we also had helmets like this. Oh, oh no. <laughs> now, is this helmet in kind of a funny shape? Yeah. It's actually a very strategic shape for deflecting arrows, so then they would be harmless after they hit. You see, the, arrow, the natives were very skilled with their bows and arrows, but we had very few weak spots. The, real, only, uh, the only real weak spots we had were our faces or and our armpits. began to take a turn for the worse. You see, we only lost about 20 men during the battle, but they had burned up every last piece of our medical supplies. And so now we had over 150 men sharing more than 600 arrow wounds between them. That's an average of four per person. And now we didn't have any medical supplies. So when their wounds started to get infected, even if they were in places that wouldn't normally kill them, the infections did their work. Yeah. And shortly after the Battle of Mobila, we had lost over 100 of our men. What? And now we have been on our expedition for quite some time, almost two years at this point. So many of our clothes and weapons and armor were starting to wear out. We started to make clothes out of whatever we could find, oftentimes long strains of grass that we wove together. We would sometimes make shirts or pants out of grass. It wasn't very good, but it was better than nothing. The wilderness was still very harsh. Well, we started to grumble and to complain. We started to talk about going home. We started to talk about sneaking away and deserting. Or some of us even started to talk about mutiny, which is where we would tell DeSoto he wasn't our leader anymore and take over the expedition ourselves so we could go home. Well, Hernando DeSoto got wind of all of these grumblings. And so he decided to lie to us. You see, I found out later after I got back to Spain that there were ships to the coast at the south that were supposed to resupply us. They would give us all the food and medicine and weapons and armor and clothes and everything that we needed to continue on the expedition. But DeSoto knew because of our grumblings that if we went down to those ships, then instead of just taking the supplies and carrying on, we wanted to go home so badly, we would board the ships and demand that they take us straight home to Spain and quit the expedition altogether. So instead of telling us about the ships, Hernando de Soto lied to us and told us the only way we would survive the coming winter would be to go north in the opposite direction. At this point, Hernando de Soto started to act like a crazed person. He was determined that we were going to find gold, or he was going to take all of us down with him. And now the natives had changed their tactics as well. They knew they couldn't win in a full assault, so instead they started using the mula tactics and attacking us at night. In fact, they ended up attacking and killing many of our very valuable pigs. <laughs> pigs were very valuable for explorers. They were very hardy, and 